Hello and good day. My name is Jeremy Berkeley and you're watching the very first episode in a 15-part series called Talking Tunes. And as you can see here, I have a After Effects file open for a trailer that we're actually working on for a show called Mecha Brawlers, which will be coming soon to our channel in October. And as you can see here, the... Um, Tune shading looks pretty traditional. Um, of course, it it's not. It's actually tune shading from uh, Maya, Autodesk Maya to be exact. And um, it's not going to be. This is not going to be a basic tutorial. We're actually going to be showing you everything, covering uh, the eyes, the skin, the hair, everything, um, clothes, uh, shading on the weapons, glows, special effects. You name it, we're going to cover it. Alright, so let's not waste any time and jump right into that. So we're going to start with the basics. And if you just take a quick glance here, you can actually see that I have a file open. With three different spheres, uh, four lights, point lights to be exact, and a ground plane. Alright, and let me just open up our outliners. You can see all the elements inside of here. Um, we have, uh, let's move that up. We have four different objects in here, uh, background, walls, props, furniture, which is, uh, has, its, has a different tune shader on it as well. Inverted objects or black clothing, organic objects, and of course the ground plane. Uh, we have four different lights. Let's bring that up just to organize things here a little bit. Uh, of course, uh, adequately named, it's uh, pretty much closely the same way, organic object light, inverted object light, props light, and shadowing light. Now this is a little different, this light here, this fourth one, because uh, basically all this um, lighting at this point is this uh, group that we have here called shadow actor. Now, Shadow Actor is just simply a duplication of these three objects, uh, whether it be uh, active objects or static objects, whichever one you want to work with. But in this case, we usually use this for active objects. So these objects will be moving. So, for example, let's say you have a character running or fighting in the uh, scene and you want the uh, shadows, which will be governed by this light up here, which is shadowing light, right? which is the shadowing light. That would be lighting all of these here. So it'd be a duplication or a duplication of your character or actor in the scene, depending on what you're working with. And you would dump all of those in this folder here called the shadow actor. And then you would connect the lights accordingly. And speaking of connecting the lights, uh, let's show you exactly how this works. Uh, going to window coming down to relationship editors and come down to light linking and light centric all right as you can see the relationship editor opens up and this is where all the magic as far as uh, controlling the lights for tune shader tune shading goes all right as you can see we have all the lights and all of the objects that are in our scene which are right here all right, and as you can see, we already have these lights set up, but at least you can see um, we'll be going through exactly what what goes where. All right, or what lights what. Um, organic object light, as you can see, will only be lighting the organic objects sphere. Um, same thing for the inverted lights and, of course, the prop lights. And as you can see, the shadowing light is actually going to be lighting the ground and the shadow actor, which is all of these here, which is just duplications of these. All right, that's, that's pretty much how it works. Um, but we will go, of course, deeper into this uh, at a later date. All right, so it's just to show you exactly how the setup will work. And as far as tune shading goes, everyone needs to know this first before you even jump into tune shading. All right. Uh, let me just dive back here so you can actually see which ones we're using. All right, so our first sphere, which is actually the background, walls, props, and furniture sphere, is this shader right up here, which is your shaded brightness. 
Tutu and shader. That's what we would use for, let's say, for instance, uh, furniture or a building. Um, anything that's that's hard surface, this works perfectly for, or for backgrounds or, or what have you. This works great for that, for hard surface objects. Um, the, L, uh, the attributes that you can see in here, of course, we have a ramp, which is a two-tone ramp. If we open this up here, we have two different uh, shaders, uh, dark gray and uh, off-white by default. And of course, you can adjust these to get whatever shadowing you want. All right, let's close that off. And of course, the color output is usually by default set to brightness. Uh, but of course, you can go in and change these. However, um, we always work with brightness. Uh, this tends to give us the best results. So I would suggest uh, you use this. Um, transparency, of course, is set to black. So it leaves everything perfectly opaque. And uh, of course, if you want to make uh, an object transparent, let's say for a uh, character's glasses or a glass or a vase, and you need it to be transparent, you can bring this up to get some transparency going. All right, uh, incandescence, um, same thing. Uh, all of these things would apply for the incandescence. Um, you have your ambient color. Um, bump mapping, well, before you even go a step further, let me explain bump mapping as far as two shading goes. Uh, we don't really use bump maps or normal maps for two shading. And here's why, we tend to get some really, really bad or iffy if you may results with this. So we tend to use displacement maps for characters or a ground, for instance, or terrain. Um, we would use displacement maps. We really wouldn't use uh, normal maps or bump maps for this. All right, if you use all of these things are uh, just fine. You can adjust these to your heart's content. Um, you have specular color, specular fall off, if need be reflectivity, as you can see here, just jump back into this as you can see on this weapon here there's a little bit of reflectivity going if you can see that right here and just a little bit down here as well um, there is some reflectivity on the shield but you only see that of course if the camera is tuned um, let's see if you can actually see that I guess you won't be able to see that here All right um, so yeah, you have reflectivity, of course you have environments for whatever reason you want to add in an additional environment. In the background, you do have shadow control, but we would usually use the lights to control the shadow we want. However, let's say you want to connect a shadow, you can do so, as long as these lights are in your scene. You have special effects, whether you want to adjust your glow intensity or specular glow, like what we have on this weapon right here. All right, we actually have a specular map, I should say, which is only going to be lighting this area here and up here. As you can see, you won't really see any lights or glows happening here in this area. All right, uh, let's see, let's see, let's get back to here. All right, so you have your glow intensity, your specular glow, ray trace options, and of course, this just to let you know again, I have mentioned before, we're using mental ray. I stressed that a lot. We were using mentally, not my software. All right. Jumping into a rim light shader. All the same elements, except for as far as incandescence goes. As you can see here, this light, which I see it's inverted because usually, as you can see here, this here is the darker color, and this one on your right is usually the bright one. Whereas in this one here, actually is bright and this one here actually is dark and it's a linear it's not set to none whereas in this one here there's none well uh, it's set to linear but of course it's well you could always have it set to none but we usually wouldn't adjust anything additional to this if you are if you do want to do so you can but uh, if you're going to add any kind of incandescent i suggest you set this to none for both before you adjust your incandescence, all right? However, you need to adjust that. That way you maintain the sharpness of the two different tools from bright to dark. All right, so let's just get back to that. Jump back to here. 
All right, so all of all of these are pretty much the same. All right, it's just the a few things might be different. All right, uh, the dark profile sheet, as you can see here, there is a dark outline around here, which is actually being governed by the incandescence. All right, now as you notice, unlike the rim light shader, where this one's bright and this one is dark, this one actually has two. But both of them are dark, which actually gives you this little outline going around here. Now let's say for whatever reason you want to make this larger or smaller. If you were to adjust this, you can actually see it happening right up here. Now of course, moving to the right would make it larger. And of course, moving to the left would make it thinner. Alright, so let me actually show you that right here. that again there we go all right so as you can see you can see the difference where this one is actually pretty thin while this one remains thick on the outside here all right now I just rendered just a piece of it so you can see the difference between the two so just by dragging the box around here and of course clicking this one render region mental ray all right so let's just click one to one just to get out of the way all right uh, guess that is it for now as usual if you have any questions feel free to uh, put them in the comments I do check this video um, and I will check this video regularly and I will try my best to answer all the questions as far as this topic goes and of course if you'd like to see more uh, please hit subscribe please hit like Maybe share the video so, you, so maybe your friends can actually see this. Maybe they might be interested in actually doing some tune shading. And uh, I'll see you next time.